This is Mr. Thompson. Uh, so let's talk about your freefall prac data and what we're going to do with it. Um, so just to recap, you would have run your uh, freefall experiment. Uh, I'm hoping you have dropped uh, a lump of plasticine from various heights, uh, say from five, one meter, two meter, three meter, four meter, five meter, and for each of those different heights, for each of those displacements, uh, you would have taken about five different data points, about five different times and uh, recorded those times into a table. So let's have a look at what we're going to do with that data. So we want to use that data to draw a graph and from that graph we would like to be able to, to determine uh, the acceleration due to gravity. That's the, the letter G, the acceleration due to gravity. So let's look at the formulas we've got. So you will recall the kinematics equation, uh, S equals UT plus half AT squared. So that's displacement. So that's the distance, uh, if you like, not quite distance, you know the difference between distance and displacement, but uh, the, the distance it falls um, is equal to the initial velocity times time plus half times the acceleration uh, times time squared. Uh, now in this instance, because our initial velocity is zero. In other words, we, when we released uh, the plasticine, we released it uh, from, from a rest position. Uh, so that UT term disappears. And our acceleration, we know, is acceleration due to gravity. Gravity is what is making it fall. So our equation reduces to S equals half GT squared. Okay, now let's have a look. If we were to graph S equals half GT squared, uh, this would be our displacement time graph. Um, so our typical displacement time graph for a function like that is going to look like this. So we're going to get a parabolic uh, graph. Now, that's not particularly useful for us for calculating g. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of mathematical wizardry, uh, and we're going to manipulate this equation so that we can graph it and we can get a straight line, and we can measure that straight line and work out what g is. So let's look at how we do that. Okay, so we're going to start again with s equals half gt squared. That's what we had before. Now we're just going to manipulate that a little bit. What if I rearrange it so it looks like this? s equals g t squared on 2 plus 0. Now um, get out your pen and paper and you'll work, you can quickly see, I think, that uh, those two equations are exactly the same. It's just written a little bit differently. Uh, and you'll see why I've written it that, that way in just a moment. So the, well, I'll tell you now, the reason we've written it this way is that equation looks a little bit like y equals mx plus c. In fact, it looks a lot like y equals mx plus c. So you will recall from maths that when you have y equals mx plus c, the graph of y equals mx plus c is a straight line. Uh, now, some conditions about that. y is a variable and x is a variable, and there are axes. Uh, M needs to be a constant and C needs to be a constant. So if you look at our, um, our equation X, sorry, S equals G T squared on 2 plus 0, that's what we've got. S is a variable. We vary our height. T or, or T squared on 2 is a variable. So uh, if we use X, in, instead of X, if we use T squared on 2, that's a variable. It's, it's not a measured variable. It's a calculated variable, but it's still a variable. Um, then G and zero are both constants. G is a constant, it's a constant acceleration due to gravity, and zero, of course, is a constant. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put those onto a graph, and we're going to, instead of instead of uh, y, so on the y-axis, we're going to use s. So y is equivalent to s here. On the x-axis, where x normally is, we're going to put t squared on two. Now, like I say, t squared on 2 is not a measured value, but we can calculate it using the measured values that we, because we measured t. So we can use, we can calculate from our measured values of t, we can calculate t squared on 2. Okay, so if we graph now our data, we should get a straight line. And the cool thing about this straight line is the slope of that line should be g. So again, recapping, y equals mx plus c m is the slope of the line, c is the y-intercept. So if we look at s equals g t squared on 2 plus 0, g is in the place of m. So g is the slope of the graph. And 0 is in the place of c, 0. So our, uh, our y-intercept should be 0. And that makes sense because if, uh, if when we first release our plasticine, uh, our displacement is 0, 
and our time is zero, so t squared on two is also zero. So it's logical that uh, that our c our, our y intercept will be zero. All right, let's look at how we put that how we put that into Excel. All right, so we're in Excel. Uh, now I'm going to assume that you've uh, that you've got a basic understanding of how to use Excel and that you've already tabulated your data. Uh, it looks something like this. So you can see across here I've got the height, the various heights: one meter, two meter, three meter, four meter, and five meter. And for each height, I've recorded the time uh, that it took to fall. Now this is real data. I went out uh, to the science block and I dropped the uh, plasticine myself and I think I've done a pretty good job. I've got fairly consistent times there. Uh, this spreadsheet will quickly show you whether you've uh, uh, recorded your time accurately or if you've been a little bit slapdash, it'll be pretty obvious. You'll see that uh, shortly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the averages. So I'm going to type average here. Uh, now average uh, that's going to be our average time. So that's going to be what t, I guess, and in seconds. Uh, now, to do that, I'm going to say equals average, uh, open brackets, and select all of those times, and close my brackets, hit enter. So it, and that has calculated the average. So the average of all of those is 0.48. Now, rather than type that same formula in each of these cells, I'm going to click that cell there, Grab that little handle, I'm not sure, the autofill handle, I think they call that. Uh, but whatever it is, you can see when I hover over it, the mouse changes. And I'm going to drag that formula all the way across here. And you can see there it has automatically calculated for each column, calculated the average. All right, so let me just um, tidy this up a little bit. Uh, let me just put some thick box around that and maybe put some color on it. OK, so that's my average. Now what I want to do is I want to calculate my minimum and my maximum. And this is where I can start to see um, whether my recording has been precise. Um, actually, you might want to look up the difference between precision and accuracy. So uh, what I'm going to look he at here is how precise uh, my uh, recording of times has been. So what I'm going to look at, I'm going to first I'm going to calculate the minimum value, the minimum minimum time value, and the maximum maximum time value for each uh, for each distance. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to use some formulas. I could just look in the table there and pick out the minimum and pick out the maximum. Uh, but it's nice to do this uh, with a formula because then if I change my data, uh, then Excel automatically updates everything, and that's what Excel is really good at. So let's use Excel to its strengths. So I'm going to say equals minimum of the minimum of all that data there. Uh, close my brackets, and as what it, as you would expect, it's picked out the minimum 0.44. The maximum, I'm going to do the same thing. Equals max. Open brackets. Uh, select all that data. So the maximum of all that data is 0.50. All right, and again, I want to do the same thing for all those rows there. So I'm just going to select those two cells now, and I'm going to grab my little um, autofill handle, and I'm going to drag that across. There we go. And so I now have the minimum and the maximum uh, for each time. And I'm just going to tidy that up a little bit there. OK, so that's my value of T. But uh, that's the average value of T. That's the minimum of the range of the values of T that I got. And that's the maximum of the range of values of T that I got. OK, so what we've got here would be really useful if we wanted to do a displacement time graph. But that's not what we, what we want to do, is it? We want to graph uh, not height versus time, but we want to graph t squared over 2 versus time. So we will need to calculate values of t squared over 2 for every height. So let's do that, t squared over 2. Um, and I'll go back to that little t, that t there. Let's go back to here. Sorry, that little 2 there, because that t needs to be t squared. So I'm going to click on font here. Click on font. And when my computer wakes up, here we go. Uh, I can make that a little superscript, so it looks like t squared on 2. There we go. So we're going to calculate t squared on 2. All right, so let's put a formula in here. So uh, we want to start with time. So we'll start with the average time. 
square it and divide by 2. So let's do that with a formula. We're going to say equals. There's our average time. We want to square that. So in Excel, we use this little caret symbol, which is a um, shift 6. That little caret symbol, that means squared. So T, sorry, that means to the power of. So, um, so B9 caret 2 means B9. What is in B9? That's our average time to the power of 2. Okay, And then all of that, we want to divide by 2. Uh, now, I don't need brackets around my B squared caret 2 because uh, Excel's smart, smart enough to know uh, the bomb dash rules, so it knows to do the power before it does the, the multiply. Okay, so if I hit enter there, there's our value for t squared on 2. Uh, and again, I'm going to use my autofill trick. I'm going to autofill that all the way across to there. So now I've got, got calculated values for t squared on 2. Now, um, I also need my minimum and maximum values. So, so I'm going to do minimum values for t squared on 2 and maximum values for t squared on 2. So my minimum value of t squared on 2 is going to be simply that same calculation, but this time um, it'll be uh, for the minimum value of, uh, of t. Okay, so if I grab, if I grab this form, I'm going to grab this um, autofill here, and I'm going to drag it down like that, and let's have a look at what that's done. What that's done, look at the formula that it's put in there. It said, uh, equals b10, good, squared divided by 2, and here it's gone equals b11 squared divided by 2. So it's put the same formula in, uh, but it's moved the inputs for that formula down as I've as I've dragged the cell down. Uh, so that's a, a very useful feature of Excel. Now I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of those three. Oh, sorry, select all of those three, and again I'm going to drag them all across like that. So now that there is t squared on 2 with that value of t. That's t squared on 2 with that as the value of t. That's t squared on 2 with that as the value of t. So you can see all the way across here, I've got my t squared on 2 values and my minimums and my maximums, uh, my minimum and maximum t squared on 2 values for each height. That was a mouthful. Okay. All right, so now it's time to do our graph. And now what do we want to graph? We want to graph our height. So I'm going to select all of the height data, including the height label there. And I'm going to come down here. I don't want average time because I don't want to graph height versus time. I want to graph height versus t squared on 2. So I'm going to hold down the control key. So I've got my height uh, data selected. Now hold down control key. Now I'm going to click and drag all the way across my t squared on 2 values. Those are the values I want to use for my x and y, or y and x, um, for my graph. So now I'm going to insert a graph. So I'm going to go insert. Uh, now I'm not going to use a line graph. A line graph or a line chart. Uh, Excel does um, some strange things with uh, line charts. That, um, we'll talk about the difference in class. But uh, for this video, just know that you need to insert an xy scatter plot. Okay, so I'm going to pick the first one there, an XY scatter plot. There we go. Uh, now, I'm just going to expand that a little bit, and you might see already that we have our first problem. Our first problem is that we've put down the bottom here, we've put time, no, we've put distance, height, that's our height, that's our displacement down the bottom, and up here we've got our time. Uh, we really wanted that the other way around. We, wa we wanted. Uh, Sorry, that's not time, that's t squared on 2. We wanted t squared on 2 along the bottom, and we wanted height along the y-axis. So I'm going to right-click on this chart. I'm just going to pick a blank section of the chart there. I'm going to right-click on it without moving it, and I'm going to select data. So if I select data now, here's a trap. Don't just click on this one that here it says switch row column. Um, that's not really what we want to do. We don't want to switch the row and the column. Uh, we want to switch the x-axis and the y-axis. So if I switch row, column, watch the, watch the graph. Ooh, that does weird stuff. So I switch it back. Okay, uh, in fact, I'm going to cancel that. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. Right-click, um, select data. So instead of switching row and column, what I'm going to do, I'll put it down here so we can see it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my t squared on 2 um, uh, series there, and I'm going to edit the series. 
Now you can see I've got the ability to uh, change the X series values and the Y series of values. So if I click in here under the series X values, click in here, you can see, see the marching ants? The march, it, it's taken the height as the X and it's taken, if I click on Y, it's for Y it's taken our T squared on two values. So I need to swap them around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to delete that X series values. And it's, for the X series values, I want T squared on two, I want those values. Okay. And then I'm going to come in here and delete those Y series values. Delete. And I'm going to choose my height for the Y series values. Okay. Now if I click on OK, and OK again, there we go. That looks better. So here, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Okay. So that's our time. Uh, sorry, that's not our time. That's our that's our T squared on two. And up here, we've got our height going from one to five. It's actually gone from one to six. It's given us a little bit of extra space on the top. That's fine. All right, let's tidy this graph up a little bit. Um, so the chart title here, I'm going to click on the chart title. It says T squared on two. Um, I'm going to um, let's call the height. Let's call the title um, height versus t squared on 2 and in fact the t squared we need to make that a superscript so if I come over here to font make that a superscript okay height versus t squared on 2 good now I'd like some uh, uh, some labels on my axes so if I click once on a blank part of the chart I've got this plus sign so I'm going to click on plus and I'm going to add axis titles excellent axis titles now let's put some generic ones in there so I'm going to double click along here so here I've got t squared on two, and my units are seconds squared on two, and my units. Um, so it's not seconds; it's seconds squared on two. Uh, and I'm going to make that one a superscript. Okay, and I'm going to make that one a superscript as well. Let's see, yeah, superscript. Okay. So that's t squared on two, and up here we have our displacement. So let me just uh, displacement uh, displacement s, and our displacement s is measured in meters. So it's just a plain old uh, measured rather than calculated value there. Okay, so that looks a bit uh, better. So a few extra marks for our graph because we've labelled it properly. All right, so um, now. What I can do is I can let, let me put let me add a trend line on this graph. So again, if I click somewhere on the graph and then I add this, put this plus sign here. If I put a trend line, so let's put a trend line in, and that's automatically put a linear trend line in there. In fact, if I look over here, um, see so where's my? If I click on the trend line and I look over here on the right hand side, if you haven't got this panel on the right hand side, then double click the trend line um, or right click and format trend line will do the same thing and you've got these trend line options so you can see there's different options for the trend line uh, and here we can do exponential linear logarithmic we're expecting a linear graph so i'm going to use a linear trend line um, you sort of need to know what to expect before you do it now what's the slope of that graph so i could get out my pen and paper and i could um, i could print that and i could measure it uh, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down here. Excel can do that for me. Uh, so if I click right down here where it says display equation on chart, that tells me that that equation is y equals 10.199x minus 0 0.1301. So straight away, I know that my experimental value for g, my experimental value for g, according to the data that I've got, is 10.199. Now what should it be? It should be 9.8 meters per second per second. So that's actually not too bad. All right, now I need to put in some error bars. Um, now there are a bunch of different ways to do error bars and uh, depending on the nature of your data and um, what you're trying to achieve, we, the, the way we're going to do error bars today for, for this graph is we're going to use the range or the variance of our data uh, to define our error bars. So in other words, we're not just going to say that um, the time for height from one meter was 0.48 what we're going to say is we're going to draw an error bar on the graph that says you know what the time for the the time it took to fall one meter was 
between 0.44 and 0.50. Okay, so we're going to, so it's going to tell us what the variance of our data is, not just the average. Um, so in fact, it's not the time we, we, we're looking at. We're actually looking at the minimum and the back and the maximum for t squared on two. So that's why we put minimum and maximum for t squared on two down here. All right. So uh, let's put in. We need to calculate positive error and negative error. In other words, how much, uh, when, we, when we put our error bars in, our error bars are going to be horizontal and they're going to describe the range uh, of possible values of t squared on two. So, so, so our positive error is how far, how much greater uh, than our average could t squared on two be? And our negative error is how much lesser, if that's a word, um, the value of t squared on t, t on t squared on 2 could be. So let's put in uh, positive. Actually, I'm going to put, um, if I put this, let me show you something. If I put plus VE, positive, uh, that's going to go, what the? Because I started with plus, and it thinks because I put plus, it means it's going to put a formula. So instead, I'm going to put uh, single quote, that, that uh, and then plus VE. So positive, and, no, not just positive, positive error. And I'm going to put uh, single quote, negative error. Okay, I'm going to calculate the positive error and the negative error. So the, the positive error simply is how much bigger is the maximum than the average value of t squared on 2. Okay, the how much bigger is the maximum value of t squared on 2 compared with the average value of t squared on 2. So the positive error, I'm just going to say equals, okay, well there's our maximum minus our average. Our maximum minus our average. Okay, and our negative error is going to be equal our average value of t squared on 2, that's that, minus our minimum. All right, now again, rather than retype all those, I'm just going to select those two, use my autofill, there we go, and I've calculated my positive and negative error. Okay, we are nearly there, we are nearly there. So again, I'm going to come across here onto my chart, I'm going to click on my chart, I'm going to add I'm going to add error bars, add error bars. So I'm just going to click on error bars there, click on error bars. Now you'll notice uh, we could, we can add error bars in the horizontal and the vertical direction. Uh, now we're only going to look at errors in our horizontal direction. Uh, and the reason for that is we could put error bars in our vertical direction. But uh, frankly, uh, I think we, I'm hoping when you measured your vertical height, you measured it fairly accurately. And uh, in fact, accurately enough that if we put error bars on our uh, vertical axis there, they would be so small that they are insignificant. So um, uh, it's not uncommon to see horizontal and vertical error bars. We are only going to worry about horizontal error bars. So let's go to our horizontal error bars, our horizontal error bars, uh, and let's have a look and see what our values are again. So if you haven't got this pane up here, you could click on the error bars, you could right click on them and you could format error bars like that to get this pane up here. Now, um, there are different ways, as I mentioned, of calculating error bars. We're going to use a custom method, a custom method. So if I click on custom, we're actually going to specify the value of our error bars. So specify value. So our positive error value is simply going to be this row of positive values that we've already calculated. And our negative error value here is going to be this, delete there, is going to be this negative Set of, set of negative error values that we've calculated there. Click on OK. There we go, there's our error values. Now actually we want to get rid of those error values. So I'm just going to right click on the vertical error values and delete. There we go, so now we've got error bars. Okay, so what's the use of the error bars? You know what? We can discuss that in class. I think this video is long enough. All right, so that shows you hopefully how to tabulate your data, how to calculate uh, your errors, and then how to display your graph with your error bars.